Bob. What did you write about him that he got so upset? The thing was, and it was once again taking the piss out of yourself, I said Ernie is one of he's a great bodybuilder. I've got nothing but respect for Ernie, but he's destroying his physique by using Simsol and fighting checking. And I know because I suffered the consequences of using it. So it was like an education. The tricep, where he does his triceps, obviously, and his biceps were way too yep. overblown, yeah. And then again, he ran around saying he was um, going to beat me up. And, you know, that's all back in the past, like, years people, ago. Why, why is it that people don't like hearing the truth about themselves? Because, you know, you I sometimes up, do, right? I sometimes, you know, give, obviously, reports and, and, and wrap-up videos at these different shows. And some of the bodybuilders get mad at me. And then they won't interview with me. They won't talk to me. They go around bad-mouthing me. And it's not that I'm saying that they're a bad person. I'm just giving a critique of their physique, you know, most of the time. Bodybuilders, mate, uh, I've been, I've fought, I've done rugby, I've been a, a, a national and state athlete in seven sports, I've hung out with someone. Bodybuilders are the most insecure people yeah. in the world. And, it, it, you know, I say it in all my interviews, I look the way I look and I can fight and do all the things I can do because of my insecurities. I wasn't happy with who I was <laughs> exactly or what I was. Right. So my insecurities made me who I am. And, if, you know, they just take everything to heart. But the thing is, if you just say something nice about everyone, you're not you're not you're not going to last long in any industry. You've got the balls to be honest to these people who can be insecurity, and some of them are like three hundred pounds and they want to get in your face. It's like, listen, I'm doing my job and I'm being honest. But yeah, you know, that's why I've got respect for people that speak their mind. And then there's, there's Lee Proof on the other end who speaks his mind, but he will say all this stuff about people, and you know, it's just. To then not back it up and be a little bit hardcore. I probably lost the uh, interview on Romano's station now after yeah. this one. But to Romano, I like because he speaks his mind and he's cool. But yeah, you asked about Lee. I've, and the, the, the thing that really upset me about Lee was once we did an appearance together, I had all my shoulder, I had three shoulder reconstructions in two years. Wow. You know, my whole life was being a big bodybuilder and all of a sudden I'm a 216 pound normal looking man mm -hmm. doing an appearance with Lee and all he could just kept bringing up was how small I looked and small I looked. Bro, oh, I was like, he was fuck I wanted you. to fucking cry. I was like, you know, once or twice it was funny and then people would come up to get my autograph. He goes, what, you're getting, your, you're getting the autograph off the bike rider over there? <laughs> no, he was fucking with you in other words. Yeah, and then the other, I guess, and this brings it out, because, you know, Lee and I have never had a rope relationship, and the other thing, I admit, hey, Guy Grundy used Nubane, I did stories about it. I you wrote about addict. it, you did. I, you know, I, I was a Nubane addict, addict for a while, too, so I, I could relate to your stories you wrote about it. And I used Simsol, I wrote articles about it, admitted about it. Lee said stuff about me in some seminars to other people or whatever about me using it. I couldn't give a shit. I did use, it's like saying Dave Palumbo's got vascularity. It's true. It is. It's not an insult. Right. And I just mucked around to him, asked him and put him on the spot about, you know, commenting about me and this insult. And he was with Kathy LaFrance where he goes, oh, no, I didn't. And then brings Kathy over. But the fact of the matter is he, he did. And oh. I just don't like it. If you're going to say one thing in one area... Say it to me and then be the same man to my face. That's one thing about bodybuilding I've noticed because of the steroids and everything involved and the ego. Bodybuilders seem to think that they're amazing fighters for some reason. Let me tell you, bodybuilders aren't amazing fighters. But first off, you need to know how to fight. A bodybuilder will rip his muscle in two seconds of trying to throw a punch. Right. You know, because your body's not accustomed to it. So you've got, like you said, they, they're very big and aggressive men that... um that give us some, some give a bit of a stereotype. And you were always freaky because you were so, you were one of the bigger guys, but you also were the opposite where you were the one. You were never arrogant. You were never rude. Well, I, I never was into fighting either. I, I just, I was about peace. You know, that was, that was who I was about it. So it never really interests me. But where did you learn to fight? Like, I mean, you're a real, you're, you're, you're the real deal. I mean, you're, you're teaching special forces how to, how to fight. Where would you learn how to do something like that? Mate, I've been uh, living on the street since I was 16. So I was, I fought, I, I couldn't even tell you how many fights. I used to fight for chicken breasts out of the dumpster. I used to fight with homeless <laughs> people for a place to sleep. You know, I would, that was part of my life. And then from 2008 to 2011, it's coming into, I, I, went, I guess I went to the dark side. I became an enforcer. I became a collector. I was a professional street fighter. Really? I got a, yeah, I got arrested by, what 12 slot raided me I was and this is 8 months ago I was my bail are you ready for my bail so everyone yeah. was, did you everyone compare bail as a badass my bail was 1 million and what, what did you do that your mail was a million bucks you must have done something pretty bad I wasn't an angel Dave I wasn't an angel 
So what yeah, happened? Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't, obviously didn't go to jail, right? No, mate. I, as I said, I was a collector, debt collector, did the street fighting thing, and it was considered they thought it, I was had mafia ties and everything. Uh -huh. And I knew people who knew people. But once the investigation went ahead and everything, they said, hey, you know what, you're innocent. And that pretty much wake up call. I was in a jail cell and I'm like, I don't mind being in jail because if I go to jail and I've been there once or twice, the main thing you're gonna do is fight. I can fight and I don't mind that lifestyle, but it dawned on me, I'm like, you selfish prick, you're a father, you've got a daughter. Oh uh, yeah, I didn't know you had a daughter. And your most important thing I was to protect my daughter and here I am thinking I'm a tough guy and I'm leaving my daughter unattended. So, you know, I got out of that. I almost went broke there for a little while, Dave, because I was making good money doing whatever I was sure. doing. Everything was okay by the police, so I've got a, I'm totally fine. I've got a good relationship with them. And that's, you know, stop doing this, focus on the acting. And ever since I did that, things in the acting world for me have just skyrocketed. So you gave up the, the, you gave up the collecting, because I was going to hire you to get some, uh, some advertisers owe me a couple of bucks. I was going to send you out over to them and uh, see if you can collect from me. I know some people who know some people. <laughs> you, you gave that up. How did you, all right, how did you get into Hollywood? I, I see you're, you're acting in movies and, and, and you've taken that personality that you got that everyone really loved when you wrote in the magazines and just the, I know in general I've talked to you before. I mean, you have a great personality. How did you direct that and, and, and channel your new energies now into, into an acting career? It's starting to blossom a little bit from what I understand. Mate, yeah, it is. Uh, I'm a very physical person. I like physicality, so I, I do a lot of action. So that need is satisfied, but I also have an intellectual side that I didn't even know I had. Like school, I, I couldn't write till I was 13. I lived on the street. So I had a challenging upbringing, but the acting and understanding it, it just it came to me naturally. So I, you know, I can sit here and converse with you on all the great teachers, such as Stanislavski. I've had training for eight years. Mm -hmm. So I'm a bit of an intellectual. I don't get into that because that freaks me out when people just talk about it 100%. So the, the, the most important reason I've had success is, or one of them is, I can act. I've got a certain look where I've got my, you know, I'm a hundred, uh, in, we go by county, I'm 225 pounds, six foot, in good condition the way I move. So I'm, I'm a bit of an anomaly. I'm different to what everyone else is. Right. And I, I realize what I've got. Everyone, all my agents and managers go, and, they said to Kevin Lavroni, they go, trim down to become mainstream and I'm like what the f wrong with you you want me to trim down to become mainstream like everybody else so I've just got to rely on my acting or oh, I can be a big freaky looking action hero guy that can act and have my own little niche yeah I see I see there. you more as a character actor rather than you're not going to be the leading man you're going to be the bad guy or the, or the guy that you know is a, is a complete maniac in the movie well mate at the moment in my career that's, that's totally what I am I'm uh I've been the lackey. I, the biggest thing I guess I just shot was, I, they're renaming it, it's, it's tentatively called Isabella. I was with John Lovett, the you know, legendary yeah. comedian. He's a big actor. Vinican from Borat. And so, uh, God damn, I can't think of his name. Another really big guy. And I had a lead role in So I was doing scenes with all these guys. And the beautiful thing was that I was a bad guy. I got to do a choreographed fight scenes. I brought into the... U.S. military to work on set with us, and they did stage all the fighting. I got to do car chasing things, and thankfully, one thing about me, and you brought it up, is people seem to like me because I'm, I'm easy going and I'm honest, but I'm also not a prick or a dick. On set, I'm the most professional guy you can work with. Mm. Like, I don't talk when I'm not supposed to talk. I'll give an idea when it's time, or I'll walk back to my mark. I'll ask the cameraman, hey, when am I in and out? Of, I ask all the questions that I don't need to be told and, and people go, how do you know all that already? I'm like, because I watch. Mm. So, I'm so you're a student. You're a student of acting too. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I watch and I get along well with everyone on set. I talk. You're on set sometimes for a month at a time. Sure. Sometimes the actors are great, but I generally get on better with the crew because they're more mad kind of guys actors are a little deep with their, their talk and I'll hang out with Mr. Pretty Girl hey I'm hanging out with her and she's yeah. the most annoying woman <laughs> in the world but she's pretty Grundy's there listening uh huh, uh -huh. I hear you, I hear you. but otherwise I talk to the crew and I would like I, I would like to direct it in the future so by talking to the crew I find out what this cameraman does I understand his job already in my mind I'm like wow there's a lot of waste in this movie industry you don't need this so that's, I, I do, I live and I learn and I enjoy it. And the other thing is, when you walk on set, 
that's just so arrogant and rude, which is amazing because do you want to walk on set in front of 30 to 50 people holding up cameras and lights and microphones for you and they're all actually hating you and hoping you do bad because you're an asshole? Mm. That's, that amazes me. I've been on sets in the movie, what was it? Not Relentless, but I had another one that'll come to me and there's a real English woman. I can't even, I didn't even know her. That's how famous she was to me. And she was, as I guess her career was on a little bit of a decline because she was doing what she didn't want to do. So we walk in there and... Not, Lindsay, not like, Lindsay Lohan, huh? Mate. <laughs> I said it wasn't Lindsay. It wasn't Lindsay Lohan, was it? No, it wasn't Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> Lohan her. <laughs> I heard career on the down on the down spin. I thought it was her. I heard she's got a new role coming up as, as she's her. And, you know what? Just get off Lindsay Lohan and get back to God. And he's got would, would, you, would you have sex with Lindsay Lohan if she came on to you on a set? I would do it just so I could come and tell you the story. Ah, oh, that's all right. I'm glad that you're at least thinking uh, entertainment value. Thank you. Oh, you always think of the story. Like something bad happens in my life. I said, right now, this sucks. But tomorrow, this is going to be a funny story. Dave, guess what happened? That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, what was I talking about? It was about me. I know that. So there was a woman on the set who was a prima donna, and she was acting like that's everyone right. hated her. And everyone couldn't stand her. So I'm in the, in the room, and two things happened. We're standing there, and... I'm, I'm a very nice person. I talk, I'm flamboyant, I'm loud. So I'm getting a lot of attention and this woman hates it. And she just tries to interrupt in the middle of the conversation because she can. And then I just go to her, excuse me, sweet. the attention's on Grundy right now. We'll get back to you. And everyone on set laughed and they walked to me afterwards. They go, bro, we are so happy you said that. We all hate her. 